and those they brought a petition to us. So I am done. I just now want to see the places that have been broken, and that is all, and I'll be going. We are not around. We are Yes, today the leader of opposition, Joel Sanyuni, has been blocked from touring the site where very many individuals were relocated in the said Rubiji swamp. We all know that there is an ongoing operation which is aimed at relocating the people from the Rubiji swamp. And I think it is a good tenure which is done in futility. For a very long time, the public has come out to demand, okay, the restoration of our swamps because Kampala has been a mess and overtaking the swamps has only has always been here in Uganda. Almost 65% of all swamps in Uganda have been evaded by various individuals, most especially those who have money. In fact, even in this ongoing demolition, the big people have remained in the, in the swamps, yet a common man is suffering at the expense of this operation. So in today's episode, I've come to talk about the leader of opposition's visit to the BG swamp, what it symbolizes, and most importantly, the certain materials we can learn from the politics of our nation. But before I do this, I want to let you know that if you're new to this channel, please subscribe. And if you're watching this video from a different platform, please head on to YouTube. Type in Sula Mawagari. There's a lot of content of this nature. If your politics and economics is what you want, this will be definitely the right channel for you to subscribe to. So today, Joel Sanyoni was a visitor in Rubiji where ver various people have been hounded to leave the swamp. Okay? And we've seen clips of different people losing houses. We've seen clips of different people being demolished. Okay? Losing land in the swamps. There's a lot of politics when it comes to this demolition. Because every time name has come out to bite, it bites the common person, not the rich people. In fact, the laws of NEMA are used selectively. If you are rich, they don't hound you. If you are poor, they will hound you. In the process, when the leader of opposition was touring the Lubiji swamp, the police blocked him and tear gas was unveiled on the entrance he came with. Before I speak on this further, let me first give you the tape when the leader of opposition was, count, uh, was talking to, to the people and countering the police. Here is the tape. Because I came to engage these people and listen to them, because they brought a petition to us. So I am done. I just now want to see the places that have been broken, and that is all, and I'll be going. We are not around. We are not around. So, that is the lead of opposition when he was being blocked from touring the place where people are being demolished. And I keep on telling people that our police is so reactionary. Okay? What is the problem with allowing the lead of opposition to the place? In that regard, he can get the best view on how he can proceed to do his work. Okay? There is nothing wrong, but the police went head on to block him. Our police is so reactionary, m m on, most especially when it comes to opposition leaders. George Sonny was doing his duty. The office of the leader of opposition is supposed to counter the government. So it's supposed to tell the government what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to, to bring a contrary view on what government is doing. But here it is, the police is blocking him. Let's continue with the video.
So if you are, if you clearly see the background, you see the policemen plus the buildings which have been demolished. Okay, you clearly see the background. But to my surprise, when you see the background, you see that various buildings which are big, like the one behind is a flat, they have not been touched. Houses have been demolished. Those who have a lot of money are remaining in the swamp. Okay, what a mystery. Okay. But apart from that, how can a leader of opposition be blocked from accessing anywhere where he needs to be, his, where, where he needs to do his job? So the issue of Rubiji, first of all, the issue of Rubiji, okay, the government is doing the right thing, but it is applying the law selectively. I don't condone any person to build in the swamp because swamps protect us, swamps clean water, swamps uh purify the water we use most especially when it's going to the lake but the selective select the selective uh, 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 the selective law which is being done by NEMA is what is the problem in Lubiji swamp there are some people who remained with the buildings like Starbucks and others are losing their property there's a factor which remained in Kombucha Others are losing their property. If indeed it is wrong to build in the swamp, all those people would have lost their property. Then that is the problem. Okay? Where is the law? If, if Starbex applied to get a certification to build in the, in the, in the, land, in the wetland, what pre prevents from those common person to also be given a window so that they can apply to NEMA to be given a priority of being in the wetland? If indeed we are to chase all people from the wetland, then the government must chase all, including those factories. Not chasing a common person at the expense of the rich. That's why most wetlands are occupied by big men. We see factories, we see mansions, we see, we see flats. Okay? Including the Munyonyo wetland, which is being uh, used by Sudir. Other people are not allowed to use the western so the selective use of the law is the one in the problem okay it has a problem and this must be fought we cannot co continue to be in a country where a law is selectively done okay let's continue with the video and we see So those are the people we are chasing away the leader of opposition Gerald Senyoni. And I I I pity those who who lost who lose houses because a house is not an easy thing to build. Houses cost millions. Some people take long to build a house. Some houses are built for years and they lose it in a few seconds. Government has a capacity of at least giving each and every person who, who lost a structure. If indeed they were human. Even if they decide to give them 2 million or 3 million or 1 million for rent, it will be a good gesture. Okay? Government has the capacity to give each person who lost a house at least 1 million or 2 million or 3 million for rent because they build those houses when government agencies are looking on. Some stayed on that land for very many years, 40, 20, how many years? You cannot destroy a house of a person who has lived on a land, even if it was illegal, but he built that house when government agencies are looking. At least, at least you give them something, even if it is a w 1 million or 2 million for rent, if indeed the government is human. But since we are being governed by these people who know nothing about, who don't prioritize the people they lead, who prioritize themselves, Everything is bound to happen. Of course, that's my opinion. Read me your comments by commenting about this. Thank you very much for listening. If this is your first time on this channel, I employ you to subscribe, like, and comment so that I can be motivated to do more of such videos. I'll see you on another one. Peace.